The result for Cyprus is segregation. Two peoples living on opposite sides of a border, isolated by their differences. Today, with tensions at a relatively low ebb, the crossings in central Nicosia are open to pedestrians. Traffic can cross the border between the north and south. But for trade, the Green Line is a real barrier. It acts as a break on the economic development of the whole island. The Greek South, with its membership of the European community, is able to trade freely with the rest of the world. But it's much tougher to sell to the North. For businesses there, the effects are much worse. The Turkish Cypriot Republic is only recognized by Turkey and can only trade through Turkey. It's a huge disadvantage for entrepreneur Ursan Dala. Because our goods are subject to high customs charges, we can't compete. Because of this, we have to conduct our business within the borders of northern Cyprus. Since only Turkey recognizes northern Cyprus as an independent state, everything bought and sold here, food, textiles, retail goods, must come via Istanbul. Even the post has to pass through Turkey first. Marketing to the rest of Cyprus is just as problematic. Ursan has made repeated efforts to get his products onto retail shelves in the south. Even talks brokered by the United Nations have failed to get the goods moving. The reason, as I understand it, is that supermarkets in the south are not prepared to put any goods produced in the Turkish north on their shelves, as they believe it will provoke a reaction from their customers. Prejudice or patriotism? The attitude of retailers coupled with the restrictions on international trade leave this Turkish Cypriot businessman angry and frustrated. But the economic divisions are a sign of a much deeper divide, one that goes to the very soul of Cypriots. <laughs> 